Hi, my name is Alexis, and I'm a senior at St. Thomas More. Um, in the beginning of June, high school students at STM will be going to a mission trip to Omaha, Nebraska through an organiza organization called Hope of the Poor. Uh, their mission field includes helping drug-addicted street kids, homeless families, and people um, who live in the city dump. While in Omaha, students will be able to serve the poor, assist with daily coffee, coffee ministry for the homeless, and visit the res reservation and grow in fellowship. Today, we come to ask for your prayers and support. Students will be in the back after Mass um, to receive your prayer intentions and to sell baked goods. Thank you for helping us bring the love and light of Christ to others. Thank you and God bless. Good morning. Welcome to the Cathedral of Our Lady of Perpetual Help for the celebration of the Ascension of the Lord. As we gather together, we begin with our diocesan prayer for vocations, which is found on the back cover of the pew booklet. Heavenly Father, we beg you for an increase in religious vocations and holy marriages in the diocese of Rapid City. Look upon us with favor and choose from our homes those who are needed for your work. Send your spirit to strengthen us and to give us open hearts and minds, ready to say yes when you call. Help our parishes and families encourage vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and consecrated life. We commend our prayers to our patroness, Our Lady of Perpetual Help, through Christ our Lord. The numbers for the music at today's Mass are printed on the Order of Worship, which is available at the church entrances. Our presider today is Father Leonard. Please stand.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Dear friends, today we celebrate Ascension, the day when our Lord Jesus Christ became the Lord of heaven and earth, but he commanded us to go and preach the good news to all the nations. He is with us at the end of days. Let us be sprinkled with clean water to remind us of our baptism. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy be present to your people's prayers. And for us, who recall the wondrous work of your creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water for you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupt nature in the birth of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received the baptism through Christ our Lord.
cleanse us of our sins. And through the celebration of this Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Amen. Gladden us with the holy joys, Almighty God, and make us rejoice with the devout thanksgiving for the ascension of Christ, your Son, is our exaltation. And where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up, after having given instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has established by his own authority. 
but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly, two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. All you peoples, clap your hands to God with cries of gladness. For the Lord, the Most High, the Awesome, is the great King over all the earth. God mounts his throne to shine. His throne amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid trumpet blast. Sing praise to God, sing a praise, sing praise to our King, sing a praise. God mounts his throne to shout. upon his holy throne. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call, what are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones, and what is the surpass, surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe in accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ 
raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the conclusion of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. I hope uh, we've given you enough smoke to make it feel like it's outside. Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? Some of you may know that I was a pilot in my previous life and I've always liked to watch airplanes as they go by and sometimes my wife will ask me, why are you standing there looking at the sky? And it's not so bad if I'm just in the backyard pausing from whatever I'm doing to watch the planes go by. It's a little more exciting when those times I've been out on the road and I see some really neat airplane going by. Just say I get a little distracted. You might ask, it's been a long time, Rich. Why are you still looking up? Because it's still a wonder for me to encounter the miracle of flight. But it's also a wonder in my heart, in my mind, of where the planes and their passengers are going. What is waiting for them at their destination? 
What will it be like? So now imagine the 11 disciples on the mountain near Galilee, listening in awe to our risen Lord as he tells them, they will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. But even with all the power and knowledge that you will receive, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has established by his own authority. And there they are standing, trying to absorb these riddles they've just heard from Jesus. And then he is lifted up and a cloud takes him from their sight. What else could they do but stand and stare, looking at the sky, wondering, where did he go? What will he do when he gets there? And maybe most importantly for them that moment, what are we supposed to do now? They had already experienced Jesus' comings and goings over the more or less 40 days since Jesus' resurrection. He had appeared on the road to Emmaus and then disappeared. He had appeared to the disciples hiding in a locked room, not once but twice. He had been there cooking breakfast on the shore when Peter's and Peter and his companions had fished all night. Each time Jesus moved on, but the scriptures do not place any significance to these disappearances. But this disappearance at the ascension of our Lord was essential for Luke to record at the beginning of the Acts of the Apostles. Why? Because it is now time for the disciples to get to the work Jesus commissioned them to do. So strengthened with Jesus' comforting words of power and knowing of their commission to go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, the disciples didn't just head right down the mountain and get to work. No, they stood and they stared. They had their mission, but they needed to work on their relationship with the Lord and to have their identities as evangelists formed by the Holy Spirit. They still had doubt in their hearts. So the angels came to them to get them moving so that they could prepare themselves for the coming of the Spirit. And the disciples did what we all should do. They prayed. If we skip a couple of verses ahead in this reading today from the Acts of the Apostles, we find that the, apostles, the, the disciples devoted themselves with one accord to prayer. Their faith in the resurrection was born in divine grace and their experience of the reality of the risen Christ was glor uh, who was glorified in the ascension became real to them. And so they stayed together as a community, a community of believers, and they prayed for the coming of the Holy Spirit. They prayed for all the gifts of the Spirit to prepare them in their mission to bring the word of God to all nations. And in his ascension, Jesus is now present at the right hand of the Father to intercede constantly for all who draw near to God through him. Jesus is our eternal mediator he assures us of the permanent outpouring of the Holy Spirit. But having entered God's heavenly kingdom, he is now hidden from our eyes and the eyes of all people. 
So as the apostles assuredly did, we pray for a relationship with Jesus through scripture and the sacraments of the church. Through the sacrament of baptism, we first encounter the gifts of the Holy Spirit. This is the beginning of our relationship with Jesus. And then our baptismal grace is completed in the sacrament of confirmation. This relationship forms our identity as Christians, as children of God, who know Jesus not by sight, but those who know the hope that belongs to his call. And like the disciples, we can no longer stand and stare wondering where Jesus is or where we should go. We know that Jesus did not abandon us in the ascension. We know he will stay with us in the Eucharist, but also in a very powerful way through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So let us now prepare to receive Jesus praying as the disciples did to have the power of the Holy Spirit come upon us in the Eucharist. With the participants in the OCA, please come forward. If they are not there, then we proceed to our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Holy Spirit Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, I from God, to God from to God, to God in not being, and substantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from him. And our Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified and consensified. He suffered death and was buried, and he rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. The kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the people of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Christian church, and profess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. God has assured us that he is with us until the end of days. May we present our prayers and a petition to him. For the church and her work of evangelization, may God continue to lead her in integrity and truth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, our prayer. For those who lead our local communities, our country, and our world, may the Holy Spirit guide and strengthen them with wisdom and fortitude, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who suffer from despair, may the Spirit grant them abundant hope. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our new parishioners, may they feel welcomed into this new community and become beacons of Christ's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all within this community of faith, may the gift of the Holy Spirit help us to be faithful witnesses to the new life offered to us in Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have passed away, may God shine his eternal light upon them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for your continuous guidance of the Christian community. Help us recognize your presence in our life and your continuous guidance through Christ our Lord.
pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and the of his holy church. Let us pray. We offer sacrifice now in this application, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may raise up to the heavenly realms through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples, and he was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcame with the Paschal joy every land, Every people exults in your praise, and the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs> indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like a dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread giving thanks, broke it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink for me, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, 
as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Peter our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coherent to eternal life, and we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, a God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance to your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who go to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Alleluia.
bless the Lord at all times. Praise of him is always in my mouth. In the Lord my soul shall make it boast. The humble shall hear and be glad. Together let us praise his name. I sought the Lord, and he answered me. From all my terrors he set me free. Your faces not be abashed. This lowly one called the Lord heard and rescued him from all his distress. and see that the Lord is good. Blessed the man who seeks refuge in him. Seek the Lord, lack no blessing. Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Hallelujah. When the just cry out, the Lord hears and rescues them in all their distress. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Those whose spirit is crushed, he will save.
Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant we pray that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you through Christ our Lord. Amen. This is Welcome Weekend. If you are a new parishioner, please stop by the welcome table at the main entrance to receive a small gift. We'd love to meet you. Altar server training for current and prospective servers will be held after this Sunday Mass, at ten, this 10.30 Mass, and at the evening 5.30 Mass. Today uh, at 12.30 p.m., the movie Nefarious is being shown at the Elks Theater in Rapid City. The movie has been described as pro-life, as an accurate depiction of spiritual warfare, and as a convincing testimony to the power of Christ. Be aware it is an R-rated film, and it would be appropriate for juniors and seniors in high school and adults. Once again, the movie Nefarious is playing this, this afternoon at 12.30 at the Elks. STM mission trip bake sale to raise money for the travel expenses to Omaha, as you heard about, is being uh, offered at the entrances this weekend after Mass. There'll be an altar server game night on Wednesday, May 24th at 6 p.m. Throughout Easter, as you probably received coming in, we have a half-page order of worship that helps us through the Mass. After Mass, please help us to keep the church clean by returning them to the entrance tables. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads for special blessing. May Almighty God bless you, for on this very day, His only begotten Son pierced the heights of heaven and unlocked for you the way to ascend to where He is. Amen. May He grant that, as Christ after His resurrection was seen plainly by His disciples, so when he comes as judge, we may show himself mercifully to you for eternity. Amen. And may you who believe he is seated with the Father in, the, in his majesty know with joy the fulfillment of his promise to stay with you until the end of time. Amen. And may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the angel, defend us Lord. in the battle. We are protection, we are protection against the wickedness of the devil. May God be with you and help you to pray. And do thou, Prince of Heaven.